Welcome again. Right now we are at John chapter 7, verses 40 to 44. People argue about Jesus. Doesn't that uh, sound familiar? Many of the multitude, therefore, when they heard these words, said, This is truly the prophet. I'm going to stop right here because a lot of people don't understand what what it means when they said, this is truly the prophet, okay? You see, when they said that, they were referring back to the prophecy given by Moshe, by Moses. When Moses said, there will come after me a prophet and him you should hear, okay? Moses prophesied of the coming of Yeshua as the prophet, the one that you should hear, okay? So that's what these people were saying. They said, truly, this is the prophet, okay? Not just a prophet. This is the prophet, okay? Verse 41, others said, this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. But some said, what? Does the Messiah come out of Galilee? Hasn't the scripture said that the Christ comes of the offspring of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So a division arose in the multitude because of him. Now, how many divisions are there right now in the world because of Jesus? You know, and this reminds me, you know, Jesus said, don't think that I've come to bring peace. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword to divide this one from that one and this one from that one and this one and from that. He come for division. Why would he say that? And why would he even speak it as if it's a good thing? Because it is a good thing. You see, God calls us to be holy. Okay? Holy means set apart. Separate. You know? Set apart, separate, called out. Actually, the word church in the original Greek manuscripts in the New Testament, the word church, ekklesia, means those that have been called out from the world. So it's talking about the vision. The word church in the original Greek, uh, ekklesia, that word itself speaks of division. You are divided from the sinful. You are not part of the sinful anymore. You are not part of the world anymore. You are part of him now. Okay? So division is good. If there wasn't division, wouldn't that be boring? I mean, if everybody was the same, it's like if every tulip was white and there was no such things as red tulips, you know, uh, purple tulips, if there was no such thing as... Di- if as different color flowers, wouldn't that be boring? You know, God made division. God discriminated one from another, okay? There is discrimination here. God causes division because it is very good. There has to be division. Right from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, God divided the light from the darkness. God divided the waters that were above the earth from waters that were beneath. God divides, okay? And it's good, okay? If, if you don't know the difference between one and two, there's something wrong with that, okay? There is discrimination. There is division, okay? And so Jesus does cause a lot of division. He did way back in his day, and he does so much today. Verse 44, some of them would have arrested him, but no one laid hands on him. You see, you know, God protected Jesus from being arrested because it wasn't his time yet. So once again, God bless you. Thanks for listening. And God give you great revelation. Open the eyes of your understanding concerning the things we're talking about here. You know, keep you humble. It's so important to be humble in the eyes of God. Remember, it says he gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. He opposes. You don't want to be someone whom God opposes. So you need to humble yourself. So as you humble yourself, call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Seek him and you will find him. How glorious that is in the name of Yeshua. Thanks again. Amen.